excuse me. Uh, my name is Justin Priest, and I'm a faculty research assistant in the Department of Botany and Plant Pathology at Oregon State University in Pankaj Jaiswal's lab. And I'm here representing Gramine and Gramine's plant reactome today. Uh, we're going to give a talk about updates at plant reactome. We have newly curated pathways, new and updated species projections, and an expanded interaction overlay feature that we are excited to share with you. Yeah, to get to the plant reactome, you can go to gramine.org, and uh, there on the main homepage of gramine.org, you see in the red box here, there's a large icon to link directly to plant reactome. Another way to get to plant reactome is to search for uh, gene locus identifiers, genes of interest to you, uh, pathway or reaction names in the search bar at the top, and that will take you to uh, Gramine's uh, search interface which has embedded pathway information, but also will link off to plant reactome. You can also go directly to plant reactome at plantreactome.gramine.org. Uh, and as I mentioned previously, just via gramine.org and the icon links. This uh, homepage provides quick access to the pathways, analysis tools, and uh, tutorials about how to use this resource. You can also contact us by clicking on this contact link. Uh, currently, uh, we are hosting pathways curated in rice. Rice Rhizo sativa is our reference species. And then the plant reactome also hosts orthology-based pathway projections for 74 other plant species across the plant kingdom. Uh, we also provide several different analysis tools for omics data analysis and visualization, as well as pathway comparisons between species. Uh, we have covered uh, plant reactome in great detail in uh, previous webinars, and I'll talk about that in a moment. I'm just going to give a quick overview for anybody who uh, might be new to this interface and is joining us for the first time. Uh, you see the Browse Pathways icon in the upper left-hand corner of the plant reactome homepage here. If you were to click on that, it will take you through to the Pathway Browser and the Fireworks interface, named Fireworks for obvious reasons. It looks like an exploding firework of pathways in the upper right-hand corner. To orient you, we have the header bar with a species selector, allowing you to switch between species. On the left-hand side, we have a hierarchical uh, tree navigator for moving between pathways uh, down to the reaction level as well. Uh, and then on the lower area, we have a series of tabs that allow you to access detailed information about any particular pathway that you're interested in. Uh, here's a truncated list of all of the species that you can access via that species selector. Once you select a particular pathway, uh, you can on the left-hand side or via the fireworks diagram itself, it'll take you through to the pathway view uh, where uh, you will see the detailed molecular information at the bottom of the screen. And uh, you can also get to baseline expression information and analysis tools and downloads in that area. I want to mention that Plant Reactome integrates with Atlas for baseline expression data. All of our gene products uh, associated with reactions and pathways uh, link off to external resources or internal resources, as the case may be. Uh, most of our orthology data is coming from Ensemble, so you can link off to uh, Ensemble Grameen to get to that. Uh, via the search interface, you can also go to Maze GDB, Tear, Congeni, other external genome browser sites. Uh, here is a view of a different pathway and the expression tab highlighted with some tissue-specific data associated with baseline expression experiments available uh, from our collaborators at EBI Atlas. Uh, I gave you that very brief overview, and uh, I'd like to encourage you to go to YouTube and search for Gramming Database if you want to uh, take a more in-depth look at all of the features that are available, uh, both at Gramine and at the Plant Reactome website. Uh, we have approximately 20 live webinars and recorded video tutorials available. We regularly announce our webinars on the homepage at gramine.org. And if uh, you want to do a deep dive on all of the various tools, features, and places for you to work with your data and share your data on our sites, I would encourage you to go there. Today, I'm going to focus on some of the new things that we have going on uh, at the plant reactome. Uh, I'll start by pointing out our new and updated species projections. We have eight new species in plant reactome. 
this time around. Uh, you'll see those listed in the upper left with their common names here. We've also uh, revised three of our species because we've changed the projection source. Uh, Ensemble Compara has made available um, homology data for Gossypium ramandi, Manahat escalenta, and, and Phaseolus vulgaris. Uh, and so we have converted from a, an internal clustering mechanism for some of our projections. And for these species, we're now using the Ensemble Compara orthology. Generally speaking, about two thirds of our projections uh, come from uh, Ensemble and the other one-third come from an in-house clustered uh, algorithm called Imperanoid. Uh, again, our reference species for curation purposes is the rise of sativa, and the total number of species we project to across the plant kingdom is 74. We currently have 264 uh, reference curated pathways. Moving to our recently curated pathways, I wanted to highlight a few. Uh, here's an example of inflorescence development. Uh, so we're depicting anther and pollen development here, a reproductive structure. Uh, similarly, we, in a previous release, we have uh, inflorescence development, uh, which covers flowering time. Uh, here's an example of genetic regulation of root development, vegetative structure development, uh, generic root development pathway, which is also affected as it happens by the deficiency of uh, various minerals such as phosphate uh, deficiency. Highlighting here the common transcription factor, ARF12, which plays an important role in responding to phosphate deficiency uh, as well as root development. So these pathways are interconnected uh, because of these uh, associations with environmental conditions. Plants don't develop in a vacuum, as we all know. Uh, these pathways highlight the environmental interactions that impact the development of the plant. So to that point, here's another pathway where we focus in on the actual response to phosphate deficiency, and you will see the presence of that same transcription factor, ARF12, in a different pathway, connecting to lateral root development, primary root development, uh, and the other activities of the phosphate deficiency pathway itself. We also take a look at responses uh, to abiotic stimuli, such as a response to submergence. Uh, this pathway represents a plant's adaptation to flood conditions uh, in abiotic stimulus, where all or a portion of the plant is submerged underwater. This is the mechanism that allows a plant to cope with stress associated with submergence by initiating phenotypic changes. Uh, one of our new interaction features, uh, or we spent some time uh, enhancing our interaction features on the Plant Reactant website, and we're excited to show that with you today. Uh, the broad point is that uh, curation is a, a very painstaking process, and we have a limited number of curators available to us, so we take advantage of other features, such as the opportunity to uh, load in or preload uh, related data to our pathway data so that we can uh, enhance the functionality of the site and connect more and more data together, including data that you can bring yourself. Uh, we've built this new functionality that can bring in new interaction data on the fly and can be overlaid on the pathways. I'll do a full demo of this in a moment, but to orient you, on the right-hand side, there is a blue dialog pane, and the middle uh, tab will take you to the interactor overlay feature, which I'll show you in a moment. That's available on the pathway browser itself. This wheel represents all of the <clears throat> genes that, according to this particular set of data, uh, interact with this particular gene in the center that is in this pathway. Uh, we, bring, we brought in a preloaded set of uh, ARINET gene-to-gene -gene interaction data, citation here, and we've listed that under plant interactome. That's the default set of data that's available to show off this new functionality. Um, but you're not limited to only working with interaction data within Arabidopsis. I'll explain more about that in a moment. Um, if, you don't current, if we don't currently have data for your species available in the plant reactome, interaction data that is, you can always upload your own data and conduct analysis of that regard. So uh, with that, I will kick over to a demo of the interaction features. Just going to check the chat window here. Cool. Uh, I didn't show off the search feature earlier, so I'll use that real quickly to get to a particular pathway that will uh, allow us to highlight the um, interaction overlays. Let's say that I'm uh, interested in photorespiration. 
Uh, you saw it had autocomplete suggestions in that box. And when it finds results, um, it will help you organize them by facet on the left-hand side in different species, or you can limit to types of uh, data return pathways or reactions, et cetera. It found two pathways for photorespiration or two references to the word photorespiration in pathways. Um, one of those references is the photorespiration pathway itself. So I can select that from the search results and it goes to an expanded view of information about that pathway. The compartments involved, one of the strengths of plant reactum is that we are able to articulate the compartmentalized location of our curated data, which species, uh, synonyms for the activities in this pathway, and then also all the locations uh, within the pathway browser that you can find the photorespiration pathway. Uh, since I selected the search result taking me to rice, if I were to click on that, it'll take me through to the pathway browser, which I'll do in a moment. Um, there's additional information. We provide summations when we curate pathways uh, to correspond to uh, our understanding of this particular behavior within the plant cell, as well as literature references associated with curation and participants, uh, participating events, all of the reactions associated with this pathway, uh, as well as orthologous events. So you could link from here over to the various projected instances of photorespiration in other species. I'm actually going to go to photorespiration in rice in this interface. Looks like it's a little bit of a slow load when I'm also running my webinar software. The species selector at the top would uh, have taken me to a rise of sativa in the other screen if it wasn't hanging, but since it is, I'm going to come straight here to the Zarabidopsis uh, thaliana, where photorespiration is already loaded. You can see here in this pathway diagram, which I've zoomed into a portion of it, I can zoom back out if I want, um, in this upper area here, on one of our genes, gene products involved in this particular reaction, <clears throat> within photorespiration and Arabidopsis projection, uh, we have a red circle in the upper right-hand corner that indicates that there is interaction data available for this gene product. Uh, you saw that I mentioned the uh, interactor overlay dialog on the right-hand side. If you click on that blue tab in the middle, it activates that. And when that slides out, you can select different interaction resources to overlay onto your diagram view. Right now, we selected our in-house hosted interactions, the Aranet Arabidopsis data, uh, titled Plant Interactum. And so it's pulling out whatever data it can find that uh, suggests that there's an interaction or interactions between this particular gene and the others. If I click on that red circle, it will open up uh, the wheel showing all of those graphically. Now this is a lot, I realize, but you're able to move each of these uh, interactions out of the way if there's one that you can't get to that you'd like to see. Uh, and these interactions themselves are linkable. I can uh, click to those and go through to uh, the uh, Ensemble Gramine page and uh, take a look at the information for that particular gene locus identifier. Chat box is blowing up here, so I'm just going to take a quick look and see if there are any immediate questions. Ah, okay. Some people are losing audio. I apologize for that. Hopefully we can get that rectified shortly. Continuing on. So these are the default sets of interactions. We have, we've loaded 1.3 million um, interactions uh, for this particular Arabidopsis set. Uh, so that is quite a bit. But uh, in addition to working with the default plant interactum set in Arabidopsis, you can upload your own data. It doesn't have to be in this species. I'll give an example in this species today, but if you have interaction data in your species of interest, uh, I'll show you how to format that data and you can upload it into this site. Uh, on the right-hand uh, dialog panel for working with the interactor overlays, below selecting different resources to get uh, live web service interaction data from other sources such as BAR, you can go down to custom resources. Um, I'm going to delete the one that I had added previously. There you go. And you can add a new resource. When you add a new resource, what you're doing is you're bringing your interaction data to the site. So it pop up, pops up an additional dialog 
uh, whereupon you can enter the name of the resource that you're going to be working with. I'm just going to keep it simple. And then you have the option of providing a file that you can upload from your local machine, or you can copy paste common delimited or tab delimited data, or you can point a URL or provide a URL that points to uh, a file that's available over HTTP. Any of those methods work. I'll use the file upload today. Um, as for format of the interaction data, when you come to the site, there's a nice little slide tutorial here at the bottom uh, that walks you through what, uh, what that data needs to look like. Assuming we're working with a file today, you have two options for data format. You can either provide it in, in a basic interaction format with two columns of uh, comma or tab delimited data, gene A, gene B, for example. Uh, or if you have more data available, say you have aliases for your interactors, or you want to provide species information or an evidence uh, code, or uh, more likely a confidence score, uh, you can provide those in the extended tuple format, and those pieces of information will also be uploaded and can be used. Uh, I'm going to select a simple form today for this. Uh, just to show you, I've just got some uh, preloaded two columns of interaction data that apply to gene locus found in the pathway I'm currently looking at. I'm going to select this file. Get around the Adobe Connect window. So I've named my test resource or my interaction data resource, and I've provided a file. I hit submit. It tells me that it liked the format of the data I provided, which is always good and it's been added to my custom resources. Now if I close this little uh, confirmation box, what I see now is that in my uh, photorespiration pathway projection to Arabidopsis, I have a different count of interaction data associated with this gene locus. Uh, there are 10 interactions. Those happen to be the ones that I just uploaded. And you can see uh, that those are also linkable off to Ensemble Grameen. And you can move these around if you need a different level of visibility. Now, that's data I provided. Put yourself in my shoes if you have data for any of our other species, uh, soybean or poplar or pine trees, red algae, whatever. Um, if those genes are present in our curated projected sets of data and you have interaction data that points to that gene, you can upload your own overlay here. Uh, this data is also downloadable. Uh, not just what you've uploaded, but our source data for plant interact dump. There's a little cloud with a down arrow on this uh, interaction bar when you're working with interactors. And if you click on that, it will download a comma separated file, CSV, uh, that contains the interaction data. Uh, there's also a slider. If you have data that provides confidence scores with the test data uh, that I used today, I did not. But uh, if you have data that provides confidence scores, you can move this slider between 0 and 1 to filter in and out different levels of confidence. And it actually makes the uh, interaction interactions disappear as the threshold moves above that level of confidence for that interaction. So you can filter down your interaction choices to a more select set uh, based on the level of confidence you want to display. OK, moving away from demo land. Uh, I wanted to highlight that we have an upcoming opportunity that we're very excited about where you can work with us on curating pathways and also uh, work with interaction data uh, that's associated with your research projects of interest. We uh, are hosting a Grameen Pathway Jamboree on the sidelines of the ICBO 2018 conference here in Corvallis. Oregon at Oregon State University. Uh, the dates are August 7 to 10 of this year. Uh, our site meeting is the four-day hands-on workshop where uh, we will aim to train plant genomic researchers to utilize plant reactome pathway knowledge base and seek your expertise for the curation of these plant pathways. Also, in identifying high-quality gene-to-gene interaction data sets for various plant species that can be made available uh, by web service to plant reactome users, by the way. Uh, and we encourage researchers from all ranks, including graduate students, uh, to come and join us. Uh, there are some travel fellowships available. The deadline for application for those is uh, April 30th. And uh, we can provide support to some Jamboree participants based on their needs. Uh, we're really excited about this opportunity. Uh, if you come and you have worked in uh, 
areas in your research projects where there is a particular pathway, for example, that is not yet present in our curated pathway set on plant reactome, we would love for you to bring that uh, to us and we can work with you at this jamboree to characterize that pathway in a way that we can then help move into plant reactome. Also, as you just saw from the interaction data demo I gave, if you have interaction data that doesn't currently have a home, we would love to work with you to uh, host that data and move it into a space where it can be shared with everybody, fully publicly available, uh, and then that can become part of our default uh, provision of interaction data on the Plant Reactant website. Uh, so we would encourage you to take a look at this. Uh, the conference that this meeting is associated with, the International Conference on Biological Ontology, has many, many other uh, interesting talks, uh, lots of opportunities to participate and interact with researchers uh, from around the world. And we're going to have a great time and hope that you would like to join us. Uh, I would like to mention uh, just remind people that may have been to Plant Reactum before, we still have the analysis tools that we had previously released for gene ID identity and expression data overlay, doing species comparisons. You can still upload your data from gene expression experiments, for example, and take a look at those overlays in color code uh, with calculated FDRs, et cetera, uh, on the site. Again, for more information on that, you can go to our previous webinars for a full demonstration of that capability. Uh, we also do provide programmatic access to the plant reactome data and the pathways themselves. We have both APIs available via our content service where you can download data uh, primarily in JSON format and consume it into your applications. Uh, and we provide two different forms of embeddable graphical widget. Uh, we're already using this widget. Uh, I didn't demonstrate it today, but it's available in the search results at gramine.org if there's pathway data associated with uh, search results in that environment. Uh, also, Ensemble has included the use of the plant reactome widget at Ensemble Plants uh, so that you can view our pathways directly in those sites. Uh, we're going to cover this information much more at a future uh, talk uh, webinar uh, later this spring. We'll be doing a deep dive on the technical side of this, and we hope to invite developers at that time to join us, and we can talk about how you can use our data and integrate Plant Reactome into your uh, digital research space. With that, uh, I would like to thank the many, many people who are uh, working with, together to make Gramine possible and to make the Plant Reactome possible at Oregon State, at Cold Spring Harbor, EBI, NYU, and at the Ontario Institute for Cancer Research. Thank you very much, uh, and it, I would be happy to take any questions via the chat window at this time, and I appreciate your attention. Thank you.